Hello Aries. Welcome to the channel. This is Asnoitsha here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading. And I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they are feeling towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So some of you might have been in a relationship with this person, could be a situationship. It could simply be that you've exchanged glances and you know that there's something there, but someone's not speaking up. A lot of hiding is going on because of feelings of being overwhelmed. Wow, interesting reading. So these cards um, could represent you. They're supposed to be representing the other person. However, this could also be you um, simply because some of the cards are quite intense. So you might also be feeling that um, you're going through this as well. And the way I do my readings, I only channel through my higher intuitive self. I always have. That's the way I do my readings. And I don't ask any questions or get any answers from any spirit guides because I don't ask them. Um, also, in the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel to provide you with a little bit of advice. Um, in regards to this entire situation, because probably what I'm seeing here, you're definitely, definitely going to uh, receive some type of advice uh, to move on and to start, start focusing also on yourself a little bit, because um, this is a very draining situation. You have here one, two, three, four, five cards that are very negative. And these are the feelings that this other person has. For some of you, you might be feeling this yourself. So here we have crisis, followed by wild woman. Then we have illusion, beauty, embracing the shadow, nourishment, grief, creativity. And then we have rhythms under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Aries, I feel so confused right now because I am overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. My mind is a blank because there's just too many things going on all at once. I need time to sort things out. I find it difficult to concentrate, difficult to reach out to you. I'm not really able to communicate because of these feelings of just being overwhelmed. There is a lot of emotions that I need to sort out. And sorting these emotions out, only then will I be able to actually make a decision or even make a move. Everything that has happened between us has created and put me into this crisis mode. I find it hard to break, to break through this mindset, this mental anguish. This is something that I'm suffering from right now. And I'm overwhelmed because in this connection I have not been as truthful as I should have been. There has been lies. Lies, deceit, suspicion. I've said a few things that could possibly have been true. 
but I have also hidden things from you, not telling you the full story, not telling you the full truth. This is something that I have seen, experienced, and realized this is what I did. I could have told you certain truths by telling you an entire paragraph, but I took out a few sentences. What you don't know won't hurt you. But is that considered a lie? Omission. And so I hide. I hide behind a veil, behind a false mask. I don't tell you what it is that I'm truly feeling. I pretend like none of this ever happened. I am embarrassed. But I don't know how to face you either, so I keep myself away from you. Many things that are in my heart, I keep my distance. I also feel that in this connection, there is a sense of beauty. I have realized and seen what beauty truly is. That is you. You are very beautiful, not only on the outside, but on the inside as well. Your charm, your talents, your charisma, your personality and your character. So beautiful. And you have this way of making me see who I really am through this looking glass that you have. I judge myself sometimes. Right now, so much has happened in this connection that there's a whole lot of awkwardness. Yes, I feel awkward, and yes, I know that you feel awkward. You saw me at a point in time where I was at my worst. I was compulsive, impulsive, and aggressive. And I really didn't know how to stop myself from reaching my shadow side. But this is a part of who I am. I am who I am and I can't really change my ways for anybody. I find it difficult. You've seen a part of me that was very dark. And there's a part of me now that wants you to simply embrace who I am because this is who I am. It's a part of me. But things are awkward. And the environment around us now is very uncomfortable. I do feel that in this connection, you have been the perfect choice, the perfect mate. Spiritually, emotionally, and physically, you have this ability of fulfilling my mind, body, and soul. You're able to do this. You have this ability, yet I have kept my distance. And I keep my distance because I am grieving for what I have done. I do feel regret, remorse, sadness and melancholy. I feel guilty for what I've done. And I know that all that has happened between us, I feel like you are fading from my life. You were that one shining star. And now that sh shining star is not as bright as it used to be. You are fading and if you go, my entire world will be left in darkness. I do want to create something with you, something that will be long-lasting for the world to see, something that will be beautiful, that talks about promise, friendship and love, a web of love I would like to weave, and you, the center of my world, Overall, I try to change my disguise, I try to change my personality, who I am, so that I can get out of this cycle of repetitiveness 
there are things that are repeating and they should not be. It's hard to ignore. For now, I don't want to be somebody I'm not. But I do find it important to not repeat the same problems, the same issues that have happened in the past. Me being overwhelmed right now, I'm just in a state of confusion. And I just can't move on. Right now, at least. All right, Aries. Very deep. Lots going on. You have here the crisis card, wild woman, which talks about deceit, illusion, embracing the shadow, and grief. These five cards um, are what this other person's thinking. Some of you might be feeling like this too, but it is a very intense kind of connection here. Somebody was not truthful to the other. Somebody now is very overwhelmed. Somebody's hiding because of what happened. Somebody's feeling very embarrassed and awkward. And also, somebody's feeling a lot of grief. So, let me know your stories. What's going on? Because this is a lot of, uh, that's a lot of negative cards. You know, it's, it's not bad if you get negative cards because you know what the person's feeling, but it's just a terrible situation that so much has happened that this is what it comes down to. All right. Okay, well, there you go. Fertility. Oh my gosh, and sacrifice. All right. These two cards really have a big, big meaning right now. Some of you might be in a third party situation. Could be, third party doesn't necessarily mean an affair, but it could be an affair. It could also be that time, energy, effort is not being spent in a connection and therefore because there's a lack of connection it feels like there's a third party in the picture that is taking away this person's attention time and effort um, and their energy let's have a look at fertility first so these are cards that I'm pulling out um, they're both major arcanas uh, this is to see what it is that happened in the first place that caused the problem So hopefully this will give you some idea First of all, the one thing that, and I never, ever, ever mention this in these cards, but these cards do have um, names of famous people, uh, historically and uh, mythologically. So this one, actually, fertility, is Cleopatra and Caesar. It just, uh, just kind of stuck out at me right now. The reason why is because they were both very powerful, egotistical figures, right? So just understand that in this connection, the both of you, to some degree, do have your own differences. You've been born and brought up in different ways, and you have your own opinions. So there is a little bit of um, the feeling of, yes, we're a power couple, but also there's a feeling of, you know, who's going to win this particular argument, that type of thing. Here we have fertility. <coughs> I'm still getting open in my cold, by the way. I had a flu. Um, sorry if I cough and my voice may sound a bit different than usual. This talks about ruling over one's life, the feeling of being ruled. A new marriage or a special relationship that may have happened. Not being able to take practical action. Not wanting to manifest physical products in life such as children artistic endeavors, or even wealth. Pregnancy, or not wanting to be pregnant, or not wanting to have children or a family. Deprivation or sterility, feeling the lack of material resources. Limitations that overwhelm. So remember you just had the crisis card in the beginning, and it talks about being overwhelmed. Here, this person started to have feelings in the past before things started to go downhill. They were just very overwhelmed. They were not ready for some type of a 
commitment with you. Actually, that's the whole issue here. They were not ready. They were not feeling comfortable. Um, they also felt that simply uh, with this type of situation that they're in with the fertility card, um, they knew that they could achieve certain things and do certain things, but they just didn't because there was fear of the unknown and there was this fear of giving up their, I guess you could say, their freedom. They feel like they don't want to be responsible for so much. This literally could be um, being in a family, uh, two people that have um, kids of their own on both sides and coming together as a big, large family, but that doesn't happen because one of the people is not comfortable with that idea. It could be both people have it or one person has children or something like that, but it has to do with family. It has to do with like brothers and sisters, having family around. This person, one of the people in this connection, just not, they're not comfortable with it. They're not comfortable with growth. Could even be wanting to settle down, having fur babies, um, not wanting to do that either. So there was a lack of, I guess, push from this person's side. There was a lack of it. Here we also have a sacrifice. Okay. So with sacrifice, we have how this individual, there you go, was caught between worlds. Short-term sacrifice to reach a long-awaited goal, taking care of other people's needs even if they are not in your own personal interest. Gaining compassion, finally, and wanting to gain compassion from difficult experiences. What happened here was that there was a desire, and there's not desire, but there's this understanding of feeling unable to make a sacrifice that a situation required. So this is huge. Feeling, this is what happened with this person. They felt unable to make the sacrifice that this particular situation required. So there was supposed to be some type of adjustment and they were not able to do this because they just didn't, they couldn't, for whatever reason. Um, this is something that's caused uh, a pretty big ruckus in this connection. Now, we also have here creating difficulties for oneself. Because somebody was being really stubborn and somebody was not changing, um, they were not really sacrificing what was required, um, it created a lot of difficulties in the connection, but also within their own mind. Because they know that they didn't change their ways for you, it also upsets them. But it's almost as if this person's mindset has just been like this. It's just me, me, me. Like, it's, it's more like this person wants to be very isolated or live on their own or be by themselves independent and they don't really want to have family or friends or... Or maybe they want their friends, but maybe they don't want your friends or your family. Um, but there's something here. They're not willing to sacrifice a certain type of lifestyle or choice that they've made in their life. All right. Let's have a look. This is the Beginner's Tarot. Oh boy, Eight of Swords, Three of Wands, oh my god, Five of Pentacles. So these are any actions, any intentions, any plans that this person has towards you. Um, I'm going to say it again, yes, it could be a third party situation that you're facing here. Not the best of cards, but you do have here the Justice card, as well as the Two of Wands, which are pretty, pretty good cards. Um, we have here the Eight of Swords, so this person that you're dealing with, are they going to, at least with this card, are they going to take any action? They can't take any action. Um, it's beyond their control. That's the kind of situation that, they're, that they find themselves stuck in. Here we have a person. This person, they're blindfolded. Eyes are shut, ears are shut. Hands are tied. Legs, feet are tied. Surrounded by swords. 
And because they're surrounded by swords, there's a restriction, a barrier. They can't move beyond this. They can't go beyond this. We also have here, in the far distance, somebody's watching them like a hawk. So somebody's watching them, watching their every move. We also have here the Three of Wands. This person has finally made a decision. And at this point in time, they're now waiting for the right time. They'll know it when they see it. They haven't seen it yet. So they'll take action when they think the time is right. Waiting for their ships to come in, whenever that happens. But they will know it when they see it, and that's when they're going to act. In the meantime, Five of Pentacles. They do feel left out in the cold. They feel... Even though they're trying to be isolated themselves, like they're keeping people at a distance, it's almost like they have this victim mentality where they feel... It's like they've done everything wrong, but they're blaming everybody else for ignoring them. So it's like they've pushed people away, but then they're saying, oh, nobody wants to talk to me. What the heck is that? <laughs> um, that's not sound-minded thinking. It's, uh, I don't even know what you call that. But Five of Pentacles here does talk about them feeling neglected, feeling rejected. But keep in mind that they have actually put themselves in this particular position. We also have a beautiful card here, Justice card. This person wants to make things right. They noticed and they realized and they see that there's certain things that need to be made right because there was a lack of balance before in this connection. Um, and now they want to create a better balance, which is, that's good. A balance goes very well with the Two of Pentacles here under the bottom of the deck. Now, the Two of Pentacles could definitely be that this person's juggling two people. And if it's not specifically just two people, it could literally be like two families. It could be juggling their job, career, their finances, their health, um, helping other people. They are quite overwhelmed right now. And maybe that's why you had um, the overwhelmed card, the, the crisis card right in the beginning. Um, and that's, I believe, maybe that's the second time. I think that's the second time that word has popped up now. Um, so with this, being overwhelmed, this individual is not really able to juggle as they thought. They thought that they could plan things. But it, it ends up that it's like they've bitten off more than they could chew and digest. And so it's too much for them. They've promised too much. I'm seeing fingers being, what is it, too many... Oh, too many cooks in the kitchen, but hmm, I don't know why I'm seeing fingers, but like a spreading their fingers so far. Oh, okay. Spreading their fingers so far or dipping their toes into so many things that they um, don't have the capacity to finish everything all at once or to take on any other responsibility. I mean, if they're this overwhelmed with other things in their life, they're not going to be able to focus on you and have quality in that focus. Okay. So do I see this person take any action? I don't see action right now, but I do see intention. And the intention comes from the Justice card. They know what's happened is wrong, but they also know that at t in, in due time, they're going to want to and they're going to try to make things right. Just going to do a quick prayer. These are messages from Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel. You have a timeline within the next few weeks or months. Okay, you have a very good card here. Yes. Whatever some of you might have been asking, the answer to that is yes, and it will be within the next few weeks or months. Now keep in mind this is a general love reading. Of course, this is not a private reading. Um, so it, it's not going to resonate for everybody out there. Wow, so we have a lot of encouragement here regarding faith and regarding meditation and prayer. 
So definitely keep up your faith, keep up your prayers. Um, ask your angels when you need to. Um, they do need permission. You have here waiting. So wait. It's going to take a while. Don't stop. Okay. So what's really good, first card's the strongest, within the next few weeks, something is going to happen. Something is going to happen within the next few weeks or months, depending on your ability to create that godly Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> what does that mean? I've explained this before in some of my readings. And when you have faith, when you actually believe in the source, what we call the creator of all, um, it's, I've experienced it's literally like a Wi-Fi connection. The stronger the connection, the stronger your belief means the stronger the connection. And you are able to actually upload your information, which is like asking your questions and your requests, and then getting downloads. Um, but it only happens if you actually have that much belief. If you don't have that much belief, the connection will be very, very weak, just like a Wi-Fi connection. So it, it literally works like that. Um, that's what I've experienced and that's what I've seen. So it is important here that within the next few weeks, yes, you can receive results and answers to whatever it is that's bothering you. Um, they have the word ask and then they have answers. You see, ask your angels and meditation will bring answers. Asking angels, um, my method and the way it's typically done with angels um, that work for the Christ consciousness as well as his father, who is the Almighty, the Source, um, he has other names. And he chooses to be a he, but it's actually a he and she, but it prefers to be in the masculine energy, more confident, more leadership, um, that sort of thing. So you can pray to the Christ consciousness. Through Christ you can get to um, his Father, uh, and that is the Almighty. He has many names, remember that. From there you can ask the Source, the Almighty, to please send down the angels, Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, from heaven, to guide you to provide you with the answers that you need. Now they work for the big boss, which is what we call God, okay? Um, it's, it's literally like a management system, so you have to kind of, they need to get permission from God, and then they also need permission from you. Um, are we able to help you? Like, how can we help you? But they can't do it willingly themselves. They need you to give them permission. So after you do that first part, second part is, yes, you know, Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, I do give you permission to please help me in my life. This is what I want. This is what I need. This is my problem. Um, give me answers through meditation. This is what it is. Meditation brings answers. Meditation can also just be main prayer. It can mean literally you meditating. 21 minutes, my angel guide has told me, is more than enough for you to actually meditate um, if you need to. Um, also, by meditation, it could just be, and I'm seeing a vision right now, I'm seeing a person sipping a cup of tea and just staring outside the window. Having time to yourself, you, me, myself, and I, you, just, just you, sitting by yourself, concentrating on life, enjoying your tea or your coffee or whatever drink it is, and I'm getting another message. Try, try for it not to be alcohol because that's an invitation for negative energies to come into your, your third eye, they enter. So sometimes you can be just by yourself and even just focusing on your life, your day-to-day -day tasks and your chores, that's fine. But sometimes you just need to put that aside and think beyond that. It's like elevating yourself above the planet and looking everything from a bird's eye point of view really, really big. Try to elevate yourself in that way so that you can see things from a broader perspective, from somebody else's perspective. That will allow you to take yourself out of the mindset that you're in right now, 
on the lower level and kind of bring you to a higher level. That is really good when you need to just kind of concentrate on your own, when you're just trying to figure certain things out, um, because you're changing your perspective. Now, sick, sipping tea and just enjoying yourself quietly, um, that is perfectly fine. And also when you do that, that is also during the time when you can receive messages from the angels intuitively in your mind. It's happened to me. They talk in different parts of my brain. So now I have different categories of who speaks where, because sometimes it's difficult for me to make out their voices. It's the strangest phenomena in my life, but it somehow happens. <laughs> and it doesn't happen when I'm having tea. It just happens sometimes randomly if I'm asking questions. Um, <clears throat> Here we also have wait, so there is going to be a little bit of time. Um, you know, the celestial beings, they work together in an effort to, to make things work. But whatever it is, it does take time. Everything takes time. Um, so here there is this understanding that there's going to be a need to wait. Now, what I'm also seeing is two things here. You're going to realize that, yes, this person is somebody from your past life. You're either twin flame, soulmates, or karmic partners. But there's also going to be a waiting period where you may just meet somebody new. And that's why it says don't stop. Don't stop loving and, and receiving love and giving love um, because that is positive energy and you're going to be sending that out into the positive universe and you're going to be receiving positive messages if you do it that way. So I do see actually somebody coming here into your life who will be somebody brand new um, they also have some type of a spiritual connection with you. You're going to feel a really interesting connection with this person. Um, in addition to that, the person that you are thinking about right now, currently, there's also going to be this waiting period where you're going to receive some answers in regards to the situation. And, you know, for some of you that are really hurting, um, I would recommend on my other channel, which is Asnoinchia Audio, I have two videos. Uh, one is called Past Life and Spiritual Connections. The other is called Sensually Intense Spiritual Connections. I recommend that you have a look at both of them because they will provide you with a little bit of reassurance and understanding as to why you feel the way that you do because of this connection. The only reason I say it because I see now that this is a spiritual connection with the romance card. For, the, for me, this is um, either twin flame, soulmate, or karmic partner, somebody that you've had a past life connection with. I do past life readings if some of you aren't also interested. Um, you can just go to my website, have a, have a look through what the description is first, if that's something that you're interested in. But what's interesting about these type of connections is that it's very, very difficult to let go, and it's very difficult to not obsess over the person. So you'll know if it's a little above and beyond a normal kind of connection, it's definitely something to do with your past life. We also have here under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme, communicate clearly. So in the past, there might have been a problem here, guys, where communication was not very clear. Somebody may have had the opportunity, but maybe they were um, sarcastic or mocking and taunting, certain type of behaviors that we have when we talk. Um, but this time around, my advice, um, on many occasions in the past, I've done this all, so, I, I've told many people, maximum like four points, three to four points maximum, what you want to talk to this person about. Even if you're texting them, try to keep it short and sweet. Don't keep it long because people get lost in the details. And they might even miss the actual point that you had. And that'll like upset you even more because they just didn't understand what it is that you're trying to say. If you write too much, people get lost in the details. So when you do communicate with this person, whatever you want to say to this person, just make sure that you're very direct, you're very clear, and there's no type of mis, I'm getting the words, misinterpret and misunderstanding, misunderstood. I just got that too. Um, so something might have happened here where there was some type of misunderstanding. It could be through your own communication, or it could also be maybe somebody else was in the picture here and um, somebody lied about something or somebody said something, like rumors. And so there was a lack of communication and there was this misunderstanding that may have occurred in this connection. Oh my. And there you have it. Aries, that is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity, some guidance in your situation. Do let me know um, 
how things go, guys. Uh, let me know if this resonated with any of you. And also, um, I'm still doing love readings, which are my written report readings. So if any of you are interested in getting that, um, I still have openings for that as well. All right, Harrys. Thank you so much for tuning in. You all take care, stay safe, and I'll see you again. Bye now.